Has Laura Loomer forced Facebook to state that it is a publisher and not just a platform? That's what it seems after Facebook referred to themselves as such multiple times in the lawsuit titled Laura Loomer v. Facebook Inc. Welcome back to Andrew Says. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. We are being throttled, uh, downvoted, delisted, whatever you want to call it by Facebook. Everyone knows this. Alternative news sources are deranked and our viewership goes down. So if you want to contribute on Patreon or any other manner by sharing the page, we've been somehow stagnated at the same amount of subscribers, slowly decreasing for the past, I don't know, four or five months. It's really an amazing thing. Not a free speech platform. Facebook declares it's a publisher and can censor whomever it wants walking into a legal trap. Now, the difference between platform and publisher is platform, um, they're not responsible under the, what is it, the Decency Act, the Communications Decency Act. We'll get to that in a bit. But a, basically, a platform is not responsible for what people say because anyone can post anything they want on it. Basically, how we uh, how we understand social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook to be, even YouTube, Instagram, where anybody posts whatever and you can't sue the company because that's what allows it to be a free platform uh, for people to use. Now, a publisher, however, has editorial control and they are not protected under what I just described as being a platform. So they're, a publisher is actually responsible for what they uh, post on their website and therefore they could be sued because that way when you become a publisher you have the right to editorialize you have the right to kick certain people off and everything now being a publisher would allow you to ban people like Laura Loomer, Paul Joseph Watson, Alex Jones, Tommy Robinson and other others without some sort of legal cause or a blatant violation of the rules because it's your platform or it's your <laughs> it's your publication you can print whatever you want, just like a newspaper doesn't owe it to you to print your editorial piece. Now in the lawsuit, and excuse me if I explain any of this wrong because I'm not a lawyer, but it seems pretty straightforward to me, they refer, refer to the rules of being a publisher multiple times while calling themselves a publisher, thus not having to give a reason to ban people. In Facebook's defense, they say, to the extent Miss Loomer's claims targets Facebook's decision to deactivate her accounts, it is also deficient. Under well-established law, neither Facebook nor any other publisher can be liable for failing to publish someone else's message. The First Amendment provides absolute protection for such decisions. Then some 15 pages later, the First Amendment protects Facebook's decision to disable Ms. Loomer's accounts. Online publishers have a First Amendment right to distribute others' speech and exercise editorial control on their platforms. Very important there. Then at the bottom of the page, Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, that's what I was referring to, also protects Facebook's decision. With limited exceptions not relevant here, Section 230C prohibits all civil claims against an online publish publisher such as Facebook based on its decision to publish or remove third-party content. So there you have it. Facebook referring to itself as a publisher and says they editorialize, which means they are not impartial, they are not unbiased, and they are responsible for things that are said on there because they reserve the right to remove third-party content and publish what they see fit, whereas a platform uh, needs to have some sort of cause, like I said, rule-breaking and whatnot, to remove a person who's just talking because it's just a platform, it's just considered the town square. So I say start suing them, <laughs> is, is what I say about that. Someone's calling you names, so sue them for hate speech, if your country allows that, libel, slander, discrimination, anything along those lines that's illegal or defamatory on Facebook. You should now be able to sue them for, since they published it. Because if they're, if they're responsible as a publisher, and they can just remove anything because they're not responsible for allowing your voice to be heard, then if they're... If they're posting things that are saying, Andrew, you're stupid and you're an idiot, and that's clearly not true, then we should be suing them. Now, this this uh, this topic is not getting as much coverage as I hoped it would. This story is a few days old, so share the video, share the story. This is pretty big, so I don't know why people aren't talking about it more. Maybe there's something I'm missing, but I do think that we will start seeing other platforms doing this because really what's going to happen to them? People are still going to use them, I'm afraid. YouTube is just com turning into commercialized television with uh, pre-approved broadcasters is what we're seeing. It's Fox News, NBC, CBS, those types are pushed to the top. Well, little old me 
even if you type in almost the exact title of the video, push way to the bottom because they just want the, the news companies are paying them to focus on their voices only, no alternative voices allowed. Now Twitter will not take down anyone that's Twitter will take down somebody that's not checkmarked for whatever reason, the, unless there's another side of the story. But when we saw Jack on Joe Rogan, they didn't really have a grasp on what they were banning people for. So I think that these companies, the Silicon Valley companies, probably decided on this long ago they're going to start slowly restricting who can post what and what can be posted, and then just come out as a publisher once they think they've got it under control. Now, Facebook is kind of doing this uh, only in the courtroom, obviously, so they're going to ride it out to the end, and I think that's what's going to happen. They might get sued by one person, but is that going to stop them from having a large user base? That's the risk here. Because then you just have word policing. You try to post something on Facebook that may be... I don't know, maybe a little controversial at all, and it's going to be taken down because Facebook is responsible for everything you say. So we could see the end of them, or we could just see blind compliance from the masses in these social media organizations. I think the one who's most immune to it would be YouTube because people are just watching things. They will just watch what's presented to them, and if YouTube is the place they go to watch things, then they're just going to watch what's on there. In terms of freedom, there's going to have to be another place that pops up, like BitChute, like Minds, like these other uh, apps and platforms. Vesby is a good one I'm on. Check out that one. V-E-Z or Z. I'm actually from uh, Caledonia, <laughs> where we say Z also. So check out one of those if you're getting sick of all this stuff, because I think that's what's going to happen. The hammer's going to have to come down at some point if they're calling themselves publishers, and that means you know speak what they like, they kick you off.